Hey folks, welcome back to the Combo Classroom for another bonus video where today I want to talk about some ways that ancient mathematicians approximated the value of the number pi. And we're gonna be proving something pretty trivial seeming today, which is that pi is larger than three, but smaller than four. And that may seem kind of silly because most of you probably already know that pi is larger than 3.13, but smaller than 3.15. But sometimes looking at ways to fully mathematically prove some simple seeming statement will show us proof techniques that could be applied further. So let's pretend that we are some ancient mathematicians who knew nothing about this number pi, apart from the fact that it describes some relationships within circles. For example, that pi was how many times longer a circle was around compared to a cross. Or in other words, we could say this circumference of the circle equals pi times the diameter, although we're going to be describing it in terms of the radius, which is half of the diameter. So we're saying the circumference is two pi r, and we wanna know what pi is, or at least some range that it must be larger than and must be smaller than without measuring it with a piece of string, actually mathematically demonstrating it. So the method we're gonna use is taking polygons and putting them inside and outside this circle, because if we have a polygon that is fully on the interior or border of this circle and doesn't pass outside at any point, we know that polygon must have a smaller perimeter than this circumference. And similarly, if a polygon was outside the circle and had no points that went inside, we'd know the perimeter of that shape must be larger than this circumference. So let's create some shapes and we're going to start with a simple one a square on the outside of this circle and this circle we want perfectly inscribed in this square imagine it fitting as snugly as possible and we can note that this diameter is exactly equal to the side length there so this square has two r per side and four sides making its perimeter equal to eight times that radius. And we know that that is larger than two times pi times the radius, which is how much the circle was around. Now let's create a shape on the inside, but we're not gonna use a square this time. We're gonna use a hexagon. If I have a hexagon, a regular one, where all the sides and angles are equal, inscribed in this circle, well, let's note that hexagons are divided into different triangles if we look at them in a certain way. And a regular hexagon is like we put six equilateral triangles together. Each of these equilateral triangles has a side length that's the radius, meaning that each of these hexagon sides is exactly equal to the radius. So the hexagon is six times the radius around. Now we have this little inequality where we can divide by 2r to get that 3 is less than pi, which is less than 4. And while that is a really poor attempt at bounding pi, because we could have probably even gotten a better guess by using a piece of string, it does show techniques ancient mathematicians would use. If I had polygons with more sides, which are a little harder to calculate the perimeter of, polygons with more sides touching the circle at each point, regular ones inscribed in there, would have a perimeter that got closer and closer to pi. And polygons on the outside with more and more sides would also crunch down to being closer and closer to an upper bound that pi couldn't be larger than. And ancient mathematicians would inscribe shapes with many sides inside the circle, as well as outer ones the circle was inscribed in. And look at these bounds, pushing pi's known amount closer and closer to a small range. 
range. We could also have done the same with areas by looking at the area of these sections, the area of that, and noting that the area of the circle must be in between those. I was just using the simplest of Pi's formulas that it shows up in, but Pi's magical and shows up in formulas related to circles in all dimensions, essentially. If we look at how much hyper volume is in a hypersphere, Pi will show up in there somewhere. And to get values of this magic number, polygons can come in handy. So that's pretty much all I wanted to show right here. I almost made it a short, but I kept filming it and couldn't get it under a minute. So I hope you enjoyed this little bonus video. If you want your own challenge, try using polygons with more sides and try and compress this range as much as you, as you can. Not based on knowledge you already have about pi, but just based on something you can mathematically prove. And make sure you're also tuned into my main combo class channel where my main full episodes go. I'm currently working on the finale for grade negative two before we move on to grade negative three. And check this video description for more links and information. I hope you have a good day and thanks for watching.